go to my channel and put them. We did, we did three. Was he lying? Was he crazy? Or was he deceived by Satan? And we did three big presentations. And after watching these, then, then respond. Yeah? Because if he's not lying, crazy, or deceived, then he must be telling the truth. And if he's telling the truth, then it's a message from God. And if it's a message from God, he's come with a message from God to create you to the creator that you're stupid not to connect to. It's a simple as that. I mean, I don't know if you're saying that the only thing that you just think that's the truth. It's a simple as that. And then if you don't believe he's telling the truth, then you have to go definitive of why he was a liar, or why he was crazy, or why he was deceived. And remember, this was not just one claim. This was a claim of 23 years. Continuous. Now, a person with mental health was retreated, their mental health deteriorated. A person with schizophrenia is a social recluse and is paranoid. Yeah? So we, sh we should see the effects of these things. Yeah? The question about the liar, did he, was he, did he have the motivation to lie? And did he have the capacity to fulfill the lie? So first of all, did he have reason to lie? Did he benefit from the lie? I, will, I would uh, counter to that that not everyone needs a reason to lie. Unfortunately, I certainly know people in my life who are compulsive liars. They lie for the sake of it, make up stories. I've, I've met people like this. They lie for a reason? Yeah, and, and maybe it's attention seeking, something like that. But, I mean, I can't know their motive. All I know is I can't believe a word that comes out of their mouth. Yeah, because they come most up with people these, lie for a reason. Stories. Most people lie for a reason. They either lie for a gain or they lie for attention. Yeah, this, this is what we say. But if you look at the claim that he, he lied for, for, for uh, fame or for whatever, look at his life and ask yourself, really? Yeah? And if he did it for... Uh, see, I have two points. Not just whether or not he had the motivation to do it. He may be altruistic. He may have seen a society and thought, you know what? Uh, I need to change these guys. I need to stop doing the things they're doing. You wouldn't really go and tell them to stop doing the thing that holds the whole society together. Stop watching the idols. He could easily have gone down and said, you know what, keep the idols. Remember Allah's the main God. You know what I'm saying? If you wanted to like, you want to, if you want to lie to the people, like I made Tommy Robinson. Yeah? He's, he's created this event on June the 1st, isn't it? I don't know. I don't, so he's doing this big march. I don't know who he is. I don't know a lot about... But what he's done, what he's done very cleverly, he's, he's roped everyone in. If you're against immigration, no problem. If you're against uh, transgender toilets and stuff like this, in your school. So he's basically told, spoke to everybody who's got a little piece of the pie, bring them all together to act like he's got this movement. Do you understand? So you do little bits and pieces. Okay. So this is this is this is the example of that. Anyway, so we look at the motivation, and then we look at the uh, capacity. Did this man have the ability to do what he's accused of? Could this man have invented the Quran? Could he have made this up? You can look at what the people at the time said when he was reciting it. Did they say it was made up? Did they say it was a liar? What did they say? They sent their best poets to listen to the Quran being recited. What was their response when they came back? When they said, where's he getting these words from? They said, sorcery. Why did Arab poets, some of the greatest poets that ever existed in Arabic, when they heard the Quran, their only conclusion was, it's supernatural. It's something, I don't know where he's getting this from. Why would that be their reaction? To some random man making this up? I mean, to be fair, at that time, everyone thought everything was supernatural. This was a time in history when, you know, if we go back even 500 years, uh, everything was supernatural in one way or the other. It was either of God or it was witchcraft and of the devil. That was the kind of world that it was back then. Yeah, potentially. But when they said to him, why send poets then? Why not send witches? Or, or super saints or something? <laughs> they sent poets. Why? Because they knew this man. He grew up with them. And the bunny ash. He was an orphan boy in their society. They watched him grow. These guys are literate. Now, where's he getting all this information from? And it's beautiful. It's, it's like poetry. It's sweet to the ear. Where's he getting this from? You're the poets. Go listen to him. Where's he getting this info from? And they came back, and they didn't come over. Oh, he must have read some beautiful Arabic scripture somewhere. They said, This is just a song. This is a song. So it's an indication that there's something special about the words. Maybe you need to get an Arab to read some. What was special about those words? 
Yeah, I, I mean, poetry often doesn't translate. I mean, the words might, the poetry often does. Style meaning grammar. Yeah. You need to get style, you can get style meaning and grammar in a sentence, it's pretty possible. Because you get style, meaning, grammar's gone. Yeah. Grammar meaning, no style. I'm studying to try and learn Polish, so I sort of understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you lose something. But the Quran contains style meaning and grammar throughout, A to Z. Beginning to end. And when you read the Quran, every single, virtually every single chapter is the same, same message. History of man, guidance for man, warning of what's to come. Throughout it. Warning of the past, guidance for the present, get ready for the future. And I make this claim to anyone. Islam, and nothing but Islam, can give you peace of mind, body and soul. No other way. Christianity can't do it, Judaism can't do it. Christians make the same claim. They can't make the claim. Christians' minds have to remain in a box. Christians can't question too hard what they're supposed to believe as Christians because it crumbles in their hands. Muslims question too hard what they're supposed to believe as Muslims. And We're told to question it. Leaving the faith. We're told to question it. They're going to be made to suffer for One second, one second. We're told to question it. We're told to question these things. Allah says in the Quran throughout it. Question it. All men of understanding. You're allowed to question maybe, but you're not allowed to conclude that Islam is wrong. Why not? Well, you know what happens to people who leave Islam. What happens? Well, they're outcasts. What, what do you mean? They become an outcast. I can't remember what the word is for somebody. What does who the Quran Islam. say? What does I know the they're committing shirk what very often. What does the Quran say about those who leave Islam? Well, I know. Have you read the Quran? No. So how are you going to tell me what the Quran says? However, I do know that having watched the video here with Ali Gawa himself speaking to a former Muslim who became a Christian, that uh, Ali Gawa said that that man deserved capital punishment. I've, I've seen his own words on video saying that. Ali! Ali. Uh, so the point is, the Quran says those who leave Islam and come back. Leave Islam and come back. Leave Islam and come back. Yeah? Allah, Allah doesn't say kill them in the front of the yeah? leave, Those who leave, come out, leave, come out, leave, come back. Does someone miss around with you? Yeah. Yeah, well, you. Yeah? And there's a beautiful verse of the Quran, like I have to do. No compulsion in religion. Yeah? If there's no compulsion, then why in uh, the Sharia does it say that you know Christians and, and Jews, if they refuse to convert, should be forced to pay jizya? Is it? What's jizya? The, word, the tax. Okay, okay. And what does jizya uh, enable? Oh, sorry, who pays jizya? And what is, the, what is it for? Christians and Muslims, uh, sorry, Christians and Jews who refuse to convert, people who refuse to convert to Islam. Who pays it? Them. Who? Uh, the Christian or the Jews who Which Christians? To convert. Which Christians? I, I mean, I don't know. I just know that I've heard. Don't speak of ignorance. It's going to be. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, the ones who play is who? Men of military age. And what does that jizya do? Exempts them from the military. Yeah? Women don't pay jizya. Old people don't pay jizya. Children don't pay jizya. Men of military age pay jizya. Yeah? And in return, the, the Muslims protect them. Who do you think saved the Jews from slaughter from the Christians in history? Back in the Crusades. No, no, no. Not the Crusades. The Muslims. Okay. There's a beautiful article I want you to go and read. Yeah, and it's written in the Jewish Chronicle by Dr. David Wasserstein, who's a Jewish professor of history. And he writes a title in the Jewish Chronicle, Jewish Chronicle, how Islam saved Jewry. Without the Muslim protection, the Christians would have wiped out the Jews of Europe. But in Andalusia, for 800 years, they were protected by the Islamic State. For 800 years, they flourished. They researched. They, were, they, they didn't have to become Muslims. They were Jews. And Jews could come and live there and protected by the state. Yeah, they paid jizya, but they were protected. What happened when the protection was over, when the conquista, so the reconquista happened with Isabella and Ferdinand, and the Catholic armies got so strong, they pushed the Muslims out of the Europe, yeah? What happened to the Jews? Huh? I don't know. Forced to convert. What did the Jews do? They said to the Muslims, let us come with you. And that is why Morocco was one of the greatest enclave of Jews before the State of Israel. Yeah, where they were protected. 
because then the Khalafa couldn't protect them in Spain anymore. So the Jews came with them. Now, does this sound like a people living in an Islamic State who are subjects of oppression, dimmies, and this? It does sound a bit like a mafia protection racket. A mafia protection racket? Yeah, yeah you must pay us for your protection. Okay, you pay us, you're exempt from the army. Muslim men had to go to the army. No Muslim men don't. Okay. Did they pay zakat, these uh, Christians? Did the Muslims pay zakat? How was that it's what we have to pay. 2.5% of your wealth. Zikat, isn't that like a charity? It's not a charity. Oh, that's, that's a different thing. Charity is sadaqa. That, uh, yeah, I, I, couldn't, I can't Zakat, remember the word. Zakat is the filth of your wealth. Zakat is the money that doesn't belong to you. 2.5% of your wealth has to be given away. Yeah? And I would go to the Beit Zakat and then they will feed the poor people with it. Yeah. yeah? Or it will be used to do other things. But the point is this. The non-Muslim didn't pay this. Yeah. I'm going to tell you a fun fact now. Have you heard of Captain Jack Sparrow? I've heard the name. <laughs> Do you know the real story of Captain Jack Sparrow who he was? His real name was Jack Birdie. Well, that was his nickname. Yusuf Riaz was his Muslim name. Yeah? Captain Jack Sparrow, you know. Yeah, yeah, right? He was, he was, he was initially originally an English buccaneer. Privateer. Yeah? Eventually, he became Muslim. His Sicilian wife became a Muslim. Their whole pirate ship, buccaneers, you know, they call the buccaneers the pirate pirates, yeah. became Muslim. And they were ferrying Jews from Spain to Morocco. This is a history you'll never know. There should be a movie about this, but you'll never hear it. Because it will rip us the name Whitewash History. They Whitewash History. Captain Jack Sparrow, you just think, that's what you think now. You know, we, when we, I hear Captain Jack Sparrow, I think of Jack Birdie, I think of Yusuf Riaz, I think of his silly wife on a pirate ship with no rum drinking and all of this stuff. And I question this, subhanAllah. How, why didn't I learn this in school, man? This is, this is information. But the point I'm trying to make to you is this, talking about the Islamic State and jizya and all of these things. 800 years the Jews flourished. Without Islam protecting them, the Christians would have wiped them out. Because the Christians were so anti semitic Why were they? Because they believed that they killed Jesus and all of this. If you, if you see the words of the church fathers, they should burn all the synagogues down, all of these things. Yeah, They wanted to distance uh, Christianity away from the Jews. Because when you look at the teachings of Jesus, it was for the Jews. He didn't come to abolish any laws, all of these things. They needed Paul's version of Christianity to be the predominant thing. So they teach to detach it from anything Jewish. So they put the blame on the Jews for crucifying him. But the irony is that they should be thanking the Jews for crucifying him. Because if he didn't get crucified, they would have been saved. How much that's wrong? Do you, do you know how much time? Imagine, Far too much. Exactly, exactly. So imagine, let me tell you something. In Islamic lands, you would you would love it because you are enjoying the what the well offers in the previous situation, which is a dinar here, and that's what is the protection. What we need to do, like the Jesus, there's we pillage everything. If you look at it, which is very interesting, which I don't know, is that you know have you know the crown jewels. Yeah. Do you have anything that was stolen from other lands and taken to Mecca? Never. Because where Islam went, it made that country possible. Okay. If you look at now, for example, the penis were You know what I'm trying to say? But no, just touch up on that. He said he wanted to. Touch up on that. He said he wanted to. He's got to Hands up. Hey, oh, are we talking about uh, those who leave Islam? Hands up. Okay. I was saying. Um, I'll, I'll think about it. I think about it. I saw in the oh, you made a view, video. Based no, on the video. No, no, no. So we were having a dialogue. No, no, no. Thank you very much. And I thought it'd be good if we met here. No, no, no. no, 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 no. I was just busy being. Are you going to do that? Are you going to be a cast? No, no, no. I'm sorry. 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 I'm sor
No we holy don't don't we don't cry. We don't want holy spirit. Christians, all of them are not challenging. I can challenge the Holy Spirit as well. The Holy Spirit, which guided Jesus on top of the mountain, walked with them. So they came to the Lord. If we took the lead, let's say the and we don't want to bully. There's no Holy Spirit. They said if we talk to you, the Holy Spirit is evil. Go get your boss. Go get your boss. Go get your boss. Go get your boss. We don't want little fish. We don't want little fish. He is the one guiding us. 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 Time to come and pray and I'll talk to him. Bring, go, go to Jesus Christ in heaven. Don't allow to come on the third part of the night and I'll talk to him. I'll debate him and I'll be conscious. I'm the top follower of Jesus Christ. I hold it too. I'll wake up. 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 Challenge to get. Get your boss. 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 Get your